Thank you for the representation and um, thank you for coming here to hear one of uh, the issues that are of great excitement to me. I think that the e-health and Accessibility Act, the principal design for all, are two most exciting things what we are doing at the moment. They are parallel disruptive changes in our societies and in our healthcare systems and societal and uh, service care systems. Firstly, uh, the point is that, as you know, car is not the horse with wheels. And the problem with digitalization quite often is that it is something that you fix on the existing systems. Fixing the wheels on horses. And then actually what you make, you make very uh, non-profitable, user unfriendly, and uh, e uh, difficult to fix systems. And if you think of your experiences of uh, health digitalization or services, you might have run on those systems. I'll take example of uh, one system that uh, I've been using uh, in, in one of the uh, cities in, in Finland. First, you have to uh, find your identification number. Then you register yourself to the system. Then you go through and you answer a set of questions. This is the pre-diagnostics. And then after that, you sort of describe what is your subject, why you would like to speak with the doctor. Then they say, thank you. We'll contact you as soon as possible. Then they'll call me when they have time. And it is the nurse who calls me and asks what is my issue. Then she, quite often it's her, uh, puts the message forward to the doctor, who puts the message back after a while to a nurse, who calls back on me, telling, okay, your recipe is renewed, or yes, we've uh, put some uh, tests for the lab so that you can go there or whatever. But the big question is, compared to the fact that I make an ordinary call to the doctor directly, how does this facilitate the doctor's diagnostics? How does this save time for doctor, nurse, or myself? How does it make the service better for me? Hmm. This is what happens when you put wheels on the horses. And actually the disruptive change of e-health and digitalization in general is that it changes the how the systems fu uh, function. You know those fa famous examples about Hilton not anymore being the biggest hotel and hotel chain in the world, but instead, because the platforms are important, it is the Airbnb. And then we would need to ask what is the disruptive change, what happens in health services with the knowledge what we have about devices, smart metering, big data, smart diagnostics, the new methods of uh, uh, using uh, uh, genome information and smart medication and so on. So you can't fix that information on the structure that exists, but you have to think what you have and then start thinking how you make the structure. Okay, that is the first point. And how to make it user-friendly is the second point, because if you create that kind of a systems that are not user-friendly, I just gave you an example, and then if you think of a person who is elderly, memory disabled, and uneducated, those kinds of people actually do use the medical services and health services. And in great extent, as you know, how they can use. And if they can't, who are you actually serving? Where are you getting the benefits? And are you actually 
creating a bigger digital divide and health divide than you are solving, uh, solving the actual problem. Okay, here's the challenge. We need to take seriously uh, the aging. Uh, Europe ages. And life expectancy uh, increases. Thanks for the uh, better uh, health and nutrition and various issues. The most uh, needed time for healthcare is when we are above. Nowadays it used to be 65, uh, it is when we are above 70, and the need of uh, heavy care is quite often the two or three last years of our lives. Then we use the medication, diagnostics, laboratories, uh, doctors and all that. That service needs to be usable by aging groups. Then I'll start with the accessibility and come back on the beginning how you structurize then the whole system. Means uh, it needs to be a default attitude on digital technology and on e-health. Not the, we shouldn't have default settings. And as you know, quite often what it happens is that the digital both devices, applications and programs are designed by relatively well-educated, most of an engineer background, young men. And there's the difference on thinking. The system is done first, then it is uh, tested in user panels, and it is adjusted. Why don't you then get it right? Because the default setting is this 30-something or quite often under 30-something male engineer, uh, quite often a bit DG, uh, ICT geek attitude. And there's nothing wrong with that. But then if you put that device or application in front of a 75-year-old, in Finnish we tend to call it Pihti Puta Mumma, 75-year-old lady with memory disabling disease, lower education, living in remote area. It doesn't work. Okay? It does not work. What do you do then? You adjust the system, but you pre-created the system. And quite often, you make the system more stupid because you think that the people are stupid because they can't use the systems. We all know what that means. Out of the mobile phone phones, you have, uh, you know, these fancy mobile phones for us, and then you have these senior mobile phones, big buttons, loud voice, social media. Ah. Uh -uh. Facebook, no, radio, maybe, taking pictures, looking YouTubes, <laughs> because it's your freedom. Stupid technology doesn't help. Then when we do start with the uh, innovation that needs to start with the end user, uh, that's a bit of a uh, difficult task because uh, for me it is a bit of a difficult and I guess for majority of you to understand uh, how you think and behave and what is easy or difficult for you when you are 85. So you so should start with the blank table with the end users. Don't think that 10 different kind of a male, uh, elderly men and women are sort of an adequate number of users and ask, how do you use, how would you like to use, what are the obstacles, what do you need? And start building the system on those, uh, 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 those uh, 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 bases. What that then would be the next step is that you have a 
accessibility and adaptability in all forms of the technology. Especially important that is that according to forecasts, we could bring up to 70% of the services to people on their homes, on health services and consultant attention uh, services and on social support also. Then, uh, when you go to uh, participatory design, the first one is what is uh, the interaction phase, what is used. Very simple, uh, but uh, sometimes difficult in the concrete terms, is that first, for, for example, I don't use the virtual glasses because they create nausea, I don't know why, but they create nausea to me. So I have a dislike towards them. If all the services would be in virtual glasses, after 20 years, I probably wouldn't use them. There are a lot of good, uh, easy accessible uh, consultation services on laptops, but if that is your, not your interface, you never open the laptop, even though that is brought to you and it is pre-programmed uh, and all that. But if you look TV quite often, you can bring a giant monitor with a camera, and that is your interface. So the interface should be designed by the use and the preference of the use. Not only one channel, but at least five or six or ten channel uh, adaptability. Second about the channel is, what would you need? Would you need a lot of text? Or little text, blank, no colors, pop-up windows, or not. Voice uh, guidance, chat possibilities, not. For some people, adding this kind of a visual hints or voice hearable hints facilitates the use of the service. For some people, creates a distraction and complication on understanding how the system works. And you can't see foresee it if you do not discuss and create the service bar with the person. And important to understand is that we, the longer we live, the more we differ from each other. When we're around one month old, Basically, same kind of a service that means mommy or someone else hugs and gives milk and everything is fine. But in the age of 85, our preferences, our attitudes, our experience, our physical and mental condition and our experience condition creates us a huge diversity of limitations, possibilities and preferences. Then, the choice of application. Not only the interface, but then what kind of apps, what kind of applications you use. Web page? Is it a tab you touch? Is it a pop-up window that you close or open? Or voice indicated application? Then, Multifunctionality, and this is going to be a big challenge uh, for, for the industry because you can't create millions of applications, mil uh, millions of the remote controllers and systems in one house, especially for the person with limited uh, knowledge and mastering capacity. Uh, that is me that gets sort of a confused with existing five remote controllers and systems already. So, how you create interoperable multifunctional systems? So, that the guidance is either in your mobile phone or it is a remote tablet on, your, on the wall or whatever is the format where you can control the technology at home, 
the contacting with the service people, the mastering of testing appliances, the conditions, conditions medication uh, uh, appliance, and all that. Then, how do we use different kind of other than uh, uh, verbal advocacy? And to me, it was rather interesting that the new Google functions are created so that uh, the dogs and actually wolves in some test labs are pretty good in, in using them and making the choices with uh, different kind of a graphic in, uh, illustration and highlights. How can we create that kind of a visual hints and architecture that guides you and your choices on the right direction even though you might have some complications on herd or uh, uh, written uh, text uh, limitations or understanding. Um, <clears throat> then what we are trying to achieve then with the e-health, what is then the horse or the car what we are trying to get? There's the rare opportuni opportunities where we could simultaneously create business at Europe, better patient safety, where we could uh, create, uh, save our costs of public health, and where we could at the same time uh, create better, more accessible services and amicable services for the patients. Uh, the goal is to improve citizens' health, uh, increase quality and access, and make the tools more effective, user-friendly, and widely accepted. And then uh, this all is described on this e-health action plan, what we uh, have uh, by the Commission. By the, day, uh, by the way, there's quite a lot of, uh, in the digital agenda, financial opportunities to uh, uh, apply for grants in uh, development of different kind of uh, devices and systems and uh, system infrastructures. And what is interesting, so far there hasn't been not even a single one that is introduced by participatory design approach. The point is that yes, there are designs, but not designs where you start from the users and users' needs and multi-functionality and uh, the possibility on flexible uses. And just then, uh, hint for you, this could be something that is of interest for at least some of the actors, knowing that uh, some of you are very good, if not all, in technology, on health, and on creating the systems. And if we could sort of bring this sort of a missing piece of the evolution, we could actually create something that is quite uh, radical and uh, paradigm change. And if we look at the estimates, that 70% of uh, the cases could be taken care remotely or at home. But those times that we visit the healthcare institutions, that should be sort of the starting point. All the services are to be brought at home or remotely what can be done. Second principle is, and this is actually some studies based on uh, done in the Tampere University in uh, health economics. Uh, quite often those cases are, as you know, on uh, 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 regularly uh, health checks, laboratory checks to adjust your medication level. Uh, and renewing the recipes, and then again, uh, when when it uh, goes to the side of working life, is the hell, uh, the, the sick leaves and, and issues like that. But then, what is important? You should never cut out the direct doctor-patient contact. And if you create the digital digital service so that there's always middlemen, middle hands you lose the information. So the system should be so that you safeguard the health professional and the patient contact. Because there's a lot of silent and tactile information that is uh, delivered on those discussions and viewing and uh, posing the questions. 
So adding the layers adds the poor quality. If we would start then, the basic thought would be that, okay, what technologies we have already and who would benefit out of them to measure your uh, vital uh, indicators, blood samples can all be done at home, delivered uh, uh, on your big data, on your per personal uh, 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 registers, who then sort of alert, alert the doctor if the limits are uh, above or under uh, the set limits. It can monitor your pulmonary functions, your heart functions. Uh, it can predict a heart attack, a heart failure. It can uh, pretty well uh, predict different kind of in, uh, infections. And there's a lot of other that kind of uh, monitoring uh, devices what could be uh, geared as a basic service for certain patient groups at home. And for the rest of us, we can buy them privately if we wish to, uh, if we wish to do it. Then we could actually uh, liberate quite a lot of uh, the doctor force and nurse force for that kind of an activity where we, we should be here. And this is the point when something complicated happens. When you are the geese to be solved. I don't know what's wrong with me, but. And now we usually make the patient run quite often to the hospital, to the lab and to the uh, doctor. And instead of that, and now we come to the uh, idea of a hospital as a platform that was pretty uh, radical to me when I heard it first time, where the concept actually is, that it is a platform like digital platforms are, even though it's, uh, it's both digital and it is a physical platform, or it is a platform like, you know, the rails are, or the roads are. So multiple user, users is possible. And then it is, or it should be actually private and public that are using the platform and the facilities. And the patient is coming there and using all the possible sources of solving the this the problem. It can be remote diagnostics, it can be digital uh, diagnostics, this Dr. Watson types that are developing very far vastly. It can be the best specialists in rare disease or extremely rare diseases or networks of pul pulmonary uh, and allergy doctors or whatever. It can be that areas private doctors and public doctors together. But the idea is that when you catch the person where you have a question mark, I don't know what is the wrong. You don't prolong the diagnostic process, but you put all the efforts as soon as possible solving the question. That saves in the longer time money, that saves in the longer time, of course, the uh, patient's conditions and uh, uh, the, the health is uh, uh, restored in the better levels than with the slower pro process and the effectiveness of the actions are better. And of course, to me, in my opinion, this is the patient right, right also. And our picture, our horse here, is this industrialized way of looking Healthcare. Well, the hospitals are sickness factories, aren't they? With the uh, different uh, units, with patient, the person running around, and different specialists in different places. The patient-centered and focused system is totally different. Then. The e-health actually makes it possible to do two other things that is interesting. One uh, is uh, the fact that uh, there are some uh, examples in the France where they don't have any bed units in it at all. They do have the emergency care and intensive care. And when the patient comes, it either is an emergency case or planned 
uh, open heart surgery. And the patient needs to stay some time in the intensive care so that the condition is stabilized. But as soon when they uh, get out of this intensive care, sort of uh, the active minute-to-minute uh, -minute follow up, they are sent to home. And of course, this might sound a risky business for the patient, but it's a contrary. Because then the person in the hospital who is uh, following all the vital signs, because the patient, when it's sent to home, there's all the gadgets about following up the blood pressure, about the sugars, about the uh, uh, urine, about uh, the heartbeat, uh, about the uh, uh, breathing function, and whatever is needed. They catch soon the abnormalities. Because in the normal bed unit, the nurse needs to do millions of other things. They do, let's say, the 24 slash 7 and look on the monitor. So actually, in the normal bed care, the abnormalities are sensed and recognized later than in this supervision, where the person who needs to supervise the intensive care unit monitoring supervises the whole monitoring also. Then the nurse is sent at home, 24 slash 7, when needed, and then more uh, or less uh, actively when not needed. The patient might come back if needed for some adjustment, or the adjustment is done there at home. What happened is that they saved costs. They erased basically all uh, difficult infections, the hospital infections, and the patients cured about 25% faster than in hospital conditions. It is the mental setting, and it is about observing uh, the situation soon. So actually, hospital isn't anymore the place where you stay. It's a place where you get diagnosed and you get complicated things done to you that can't be done at home. But then the next step is the mobile hospital, what we can create already now and are using in the crisis uh, areas and uh, uh, in, in war zones. You can basically pack the whole hospital in, in a huge truck. We could upgrade part of our um, uh, ambulances with that kind of a facility that can treat better at home or start treating complicated issues like uh, massive stroke would be already on the way to the right care. I'm in Hamelina, about 70 kilometers from here, and what now happens is that first I go to district hospital, if I have a massive attack, then they notice they can't do anything there, they order another ambulance, and I'm carried to Tampere, and hopefully my husband will write some nice phrases on, on my funeral. But in this case, actually, what would happen is that this uh, emergency call picks up the case, sends upgraded ambulance, the treatment starts at home and on the way, and I'm uh, directed directly to Tampere uh, with the speed of light, and my chances to, uh, to be saved are pretty high. Uh, what is uh, interesting on this and why I picked you the mobile hospitals, uh, the, the hospital uh, that is an open platform and the hospital with no beds and services going to home, and how does this link uh, to this uh, uh, design for all of systems, is that we shouldn't actually debate as much as we do about the walls in our healthcare system. We do not need that much of the walls. We need specially, uh, <clears throat> special uh, competencies in high-level uh, hospitals that we have about five in Finland. And the rest, we should mentally erase the walls and things. Think about 70-80% with fast developing technology. How do you put the service on wheels on digital platforms and how you bring it at home. And to do that, knowing that we are aging and the majority of the users are aged people, what needs to happen is 
that the devices and the systems are easily accessible, they are intuitive to use, and they can be truly uh, tailored for different kinds of people's needs, and they can be truly used uh, with uh, everybody. And so this is designing with end users, <clears throat> putting use of all the uh, technology we know, and the third part that is my favorite, if you don't want to create the horse, you have to redesign the healthcare system. And it is as big of a change, I believe, than the uh, change from Hilton to Airbnbs, than in energy infrastructure to prosumers, renewables, uh, energy adjustment services, or maybe facing for our retail sector with drones uh, of uh, direct uh, deliveries, or what happened with Amazons and others, e-commerce uh, e with uh, other uh, forms of commerce. It's a disruptive change of a system, and you either push it back by holding with the old existing structure, or you facilitate the change and you create the knowledge you can sell to others by grasping it, by developing, and by designing the public frame uh, accordingly what the uh, e-health possibilities are. So once again, thank you. And uh, I hope to see a lot of uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, projects for, to, to be created in, in Finland and here in Tampere, how you could then concretely do this kind of a services, devices, and uh, the whole healthcare system. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for CFA? Got a couple. Bring the cube to you. Hello. Um, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. I was wondering if you could uh, go over a little bit more or describe a little bit more some of the barriers to getting these things done. I know there's a lot of ideas as to how how the system can change a lot of them, using a lot of technology which already exists. So why is it being done already more? So you want to hear a bit of a description of the barriers that we are having nowadays? Yes. Uh, there are different levels of barriers. Firstly, uh, <clears throat> uh, that we have had a long investment of the healthcare actually creates the problem unintentionally because we have created uh, quite a long time a system that exists. And actually I love the Finnish system, the ideology behind there. Because the ideology is, ideology is public health care. That means access to all, service for all. And that means health care, not sick, sick industry. So it is uh, the counseling service, and this is this Terveyskeskus model, as you know, the, the system that, okay, it is health center, not the sick center. And they are sick centers. So it should be the model what we are uh, producing. Uh, <clears throat> today for mothers, expect, expecting mothers and children. So it is uh, uh, preventing, advocating, catching up problems soon. It can't do that. It should do that. But then again, we have a lot of educated people, and younger, younger the, the more they are using the different internet, uh, internet facilities and platforms. This guidance should be given there. <coughs> then, what is the structure of the problem uh, is that you would need to firstly invest to create these new services. But when you are spending your money on the existing healthcare center system or specialized healthcare, you can't take the money out of there because there's some patient that stands on the line and wants to have it, uh, the, the recipe renewed. And so you don't put the extra money on the investments. This is the first problem. Second problem is that there's not interoperability of the systems. Not in Finland, not between uh, specialized uh, healthcare and public healthcare, not between public and private, not even, as you know, between different municipalities. Not to talk about with the Europe 
and the big fight with the Europe is that now everybody seems to be developing their uh, <coughs> they, they personal data systems nationally. What about then when you go to Spain or to Belgium? You don't have a standardized way how you put your diagnosis and medications and other information. Plus, if you don't standardize it, the Belgian doctor can't read your uh, whatever uh, European uh, health card system and have your information there. So you are creating barriers as we speak. And the first requirement, and that should be on regu regulatory basis, I think, it is not, is that all the systems need to be interoperable. Simple as that as it is in your mobile phone, if it is Android, different kind of apps you can use there. And it's not fixed that with the Samsung you can use that and uh, with Huawei you can use that. Interoperable. Standardized way of registering. Putting all the information already there. That is the first start. Then the second start is to uh, have some uh, forerunners, as I mentioned, some of the uh, examples in France. Overall, they are not all in, in everything on their best. But we should set these six samples because then someone can go and visit and see, okay, this is how it should be or could be done. And you don't danger the patient safety. And there, I think that our Sote uh, and this uh, big change that we are in middle could give us a huge possibility. And the biggest, biggest, biggest obstacle are the doctors and politicians. If you lead a hospital, and you have done it for quite some time. You have a pattern in your mind, totally good willing, how it runs. And then someone comes and says, huh, it's a platform. You don't need to have this kind of a different kind of a section. So oh, let's erase the pains. Think of what is the reaction quite legitimately. So there's a lot of this kind of an internal resistance, not all the people but in the system per se, and how it is covered. No, 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 you can't do it. No, 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 you can't put these services at home. It, it risks patient safety. No, 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 it's not an efficient way of using the doctor's time. But the, this is not even the worst. Us, the politicians are the worst. We fight over the walls. Is it the public or is it the private? Is it the municipality or is it the state? Or is it the region that can govern these uh, uh, walls? And are, are these walls here or there? And it's extremely difficult for politicians to sit out of this frame and start thinking, okay, if we wouldn't have the existing system, how would we create? And you tend to defend and safeguard something that is dear to you, quite legitimately, all wants to have a better uh, position uh, and better future for, for patients. But in some cases, you defend something that doesn't anymore exist. And this is unfortunately quite often the case of the sort of the public preventive health care. Because there are the walls rest, but the content is not, not in very good shape because of the resources are not very good shape. But this is not the fault of the people working there. So there's a lot of this kind of inherent resistance, and someone then needs to go and do it differently. And then when you seeing is believing, then be it whatever exote in small scale, or someone else is doing, then you start sort of looking quite quickly, ah, oh, they did it, it did work. The patients didn't die even though they were sent two days after the open heart surgery at home. Ah, you could actually do it so that you remote uh, control some of these activities. Or yes, you could actually uh, bring, like it is in this Finnish case, uh, uh, the IV medication at home and the remote diagnosis on, on pneumonia on elderly people. So you don't need to get, get the elderly lady to, to queue 24 hours in the emergency unit to get the uh, diagnostics and then start the medication and then lay uh, the week in the bed and then get back in the home or whatever is the case. I don't know if it answered your question. I did. 